Beware of evil on the altar of God. Hello great people, UP, welcome back to Emmy Narrate channel. It's been a long time. I know right. Well, no statement, except to say, I'm deeply sorry to have been away for that long. Thank you for always supporting. I appreciate you. God bless you immensely. While away, a lot of knowledge was gathered to share with you. There has been numerous expository. Numerous ideas and I am overwhelmed on how to put them down to not just for your viewing pleasure but to gaining of knowledge, being inspired and motivated. Many of the knowledge gathered are for Christians to be aware of what is happening to the body of Christ, the church and the society. I shall mix it up with social issues as well, for everyone to stay informed as we live in a global society. Please, do not stay away. Don't be angry or discouraged because Emmy Narrate was away for so long and maybe you feel, the channel is not serious. I understand I have apologized many times and still didn't keep to the promise of being around consistently. But as long as God helps me, and His grace is sufficient unto me, I shall always publish videos to inspire, motivate, encourage and educate us. Thank you for the love. I appreciate all my subscribers and viewers. I love you all. In today's video, I shall show you a story of the atrocities most people who proclaim themselves to be men of God are doing in the church. This video is not to castigate the church, or blackmail the pastors, but to make the believers to know that the days are evil and we in the world full of darkness and every Christian needs to know God personally, have a personal relationship with God and pray earnestly that they don't fall a victim to the wicked men, who disguise themselves to be pastors, deacons, deaconesses, elders and any other portfolio they answer. This video is an eye-opener of the evil on the altar. Sister Amanda is a young widow, member of the Gracious Family Church. Good morning Pastor, how are you doing this morning? I came to see you in the office. Good morning Sister Amanda, I am good this morning. I'm super excited you came to see me. This act of kindness from you is very good. I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you my dear sister. But you know Pastor, I am not happy with you. How could you be ignoring me so much? I called to see you, to talk to you and you pretended you didn't see my calls. My missed calls. Even the messages I sent to you. Calm down sister Amanda, I understand how you feel, you know how these things are, it's not easy for me, but, I promise you, I'll make it up to you. Please? I see, is it about your wife? Does she not know that you are a pastor and that, you are accessible to everyone, or that everyone should be accessible to you? A pastor's wife shouldn't be possessive, she should know that the husband is for everyone for the work of God. You need to pray for people, visit the sick, pray for them, help the downtrodden and not just attending to your wife. She should have thought of it when she agreed on her own to marry a pastor. I know right? That's why I can't wait to divorce her. That woman is such a distraction to me. She hasn't allowed me to do the things of God to explore the word of God and serve God well and take care of the sheep. She is always nagging, fighting me and not giving me a space. I need a fresh air. I need some breathing space. Moreover, I am a man. Before I am a pastor, a man of God, I am human. Flesh and blood, and a man. I need my space. I need a me time to commune with God and see my congregants. Yeah, I agree with you pastor, you married a wrong woman. That woman, you call your wife, a self-acclaimed wife. Gosh. Come on. Don't tell me you are jealous. You know I love you. You are the best thing that ever happened to me. I made a mistake marrying my wife. I regret every day why I married her, and I wish I had met you earlier. Who knows? I would have been a big general overseer by now. Owning my own church, running my thing, and not under someone as a pastor. Come here. Gosh. I can't wait to get divorced by next month, so we can be free. I'll just resign from the ministry as a resident pastor and we shall go to another city and establish our church. You shall be my wife, my right wing and we shall take the ministry to a great level. 
You know you always make me happy. I have been so happy since our part crossed. It's divine direction that God brought me to this church. It is destiny. I came here so that destiny can connect us together. We were meant to be my love. I love you so much my pastor, my spiritual head. Life is so unfair, how can life not have connected us since, and made us to marry wrong partners? See now, my husband is late and you married a wrong woman who is not fit to be called your wife or pastor's wife, and now we found each other. We are stuck together, ah, I can't wait for you to finalize the divorce so we can get married already and be together forever. I know people will judge us, criticize us, but they are not God. No one is God over me except my Heavenly Father, who doesn't judge us like men do. People get into others' businesses and act God, they play God and pass judgment as if they are perfect and that everything is well with them. Who is man to judge me? When the Bible has said judge not. Did the Bible not say in Romans 14 13, let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. It said again, Luke 6 37, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged, condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned, forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Yet, this world people, this hypocrites everywhere will be nosing around, seeking whom to judge, trying to be a stumbling block for us. Hum, they have failed already. I'm glad you know that. Now, that's the spirit. That's my baby, that's my love. Come here. Dot damn it. I feel like eating you up right now. You know I miss you so much. I was just dreaming about you the other night. Ah! Me too. I dreamt about you cuddling me and whispering some sweet nonsense in my ear. Then I woke up and it was a dream. I was so angry. Ah! My love. Don't worry. It's just a matter of time. It shall be over. By next month. My divorce will be finalized and we shall be free to be seeing each other freely and start making plans for our marriage. Oh, I forgot my manners. Please, have a seat. This is the plan Sister Amanda, I shall be going away for two weeks. During that period, I shall finalize my divorce papers to my future ex-wife, Samantha. By the time I'm back, everything shall be settled. People will talk, we shall keep it low for a while. Lay low until after a few months. I shall seek for a transfer to another station, maybe another state, and we shall start afresh there. How do you see it? It's alright by me, I'm going to miss you so much. Don't worry, we shall have a good time before I depart. Alright then, let me run along. See you soon. See you soon my love. Pastor Alan traveled out of town the following week. Two weeks later, it's Amanda calling me again. Dear Lord, I am tired of her calls and complaints. Why is she disturbing me every day, every time? Oh, my gracious goodness. Honey? What's wrong? I overheard your voice while entering the kitchen. Were you on phone with someone? My God, I'm just so tired. I don't know what to tell the caller really. Caller? Who is it? Hope there's no problem? Seriously honey, I don't know how to classify it. If it's a problem or not. I'm just tired about hearing or listening to her complaints. I have tried avoiding her calls or ignoring her complaints but she doesn't get it. It's Amanda. Oh, I see. Honey, please, I need your candid advice to tell her. What should I do? What should I tell her? The lady just picked me to weary my life. She has been calling for a gazillion time. Complaining and saying the same thing. I have told her to relax, to chill. To think about it again, to reconsider or ask God if that's his will for her on earth. But, she wouldn't listen, she kept telling me that I'm the only one who she can freely talk to, and I don't intend to hurt her feelings, but I am not interested in this very discussion and issue. And I'm busy, I'm trying to do the dishes and also prepare dinner. That's her again, hem. Hello, hello, Sister Cynthia, it seems you don't want to talk to me. Are you so busy? I am tired of this games. Pastor Franklin has deceived me. 
He told me that he loves me, that he had a dream, a vision that he married a wrong woman and we were supposed to be together. He has been having canal knowledge of me. We have been seeing each other. I am telling you this because you are my friend, I see you as a sister. I don't want you to judge me, but just listen. I have fallen in love with Pastor Franklin, and I don't mind being his wife. He told me that his marriage with the wife had been heading to the rocks, that he was in the process of divorcing his wife. You know at first, I was skeptical about it. But I gave it a thought, and said I should allow nature have its way. We love each other, or maybe so I thought, I love him so much. We have been sleeping with each other, he has been milking me. And I have invested in this relationship and hope for it to work. Is it a crime to fall in love? If love is a crime, I'm willing to go jail. I will kill myself if Pastor Franklin disappoint me. My heart is tearing apart, I'm falling. He hasn't been picking my calls or replying my messages. Please, advise me, what should I do? Seriously Amanda, I don't mean to hurt your feelings. But, I don't know what to advise you. I would suggest you try and meet with my husband, I will talk to him that you wish to see him, and he will know how to advise you as a man. I wouldn't want to be sentimental about it because I'm a woman. Let another person advise you. Thank you so much for your understanding. Please, tell your husband, I'll come and see him tomorrow by 5 p.m. Thank you so much, and I am sorry for disturbing you please. I needed someone who would listen without judging me. Good night. The following day. Welcome Sister Amanda. Good evening sir. Thank you for having me in your house. Please sir, I have an issue. I am not ashamed to say it, though it is heavy in my mouth to say it. I am just worried and I feel like talking to someone about it. I wish to confide in you and, your wife has been my friend. The thing is. It's alright. The thing is, I have been seeing Pastor Franklin. We are in a relationship, and he promised to marry me. We have been sleeping with each other and, he told me he was processing his divorce papers with his soon-to-be ex-wife. He told he will be away for two weeks to go finalize the divorce, but it's three weeks now, he hasn't returned. It has been the assistant pastor that has been doing the preaching and running the church. I have called him severally, he hasn't picked or returned my calls and hasn't replied to my messages. Is it that he has gotten a transfer secretly and he didn't deem it fit to tell me? I am worried. I don't understand what is going on. Wow! I mean, sorry, you and Pastor Franklin have a thing going on in the church? Please, don't judge me, I'm not perfect. It's only God that is perfect. Our righteousness is like a filthy rag before God. I love Pastor Franklin, and I believe he loves me too. I just hope everything is alright with him. Please, have you called him recently? Is he okay? Far from it. Who am I to judge you? But, Sister Amanda, you know Pastor Franklin is married. He is a married man. Our pastor, the wife is a good woman, our women leader. The head of women in the church. Do you think God would be happy with your actions? Brother Jones, there is no marriage in heaven. And it doesn't matter who he is married to or not, we are destined to be. And God doesn't judge man like we humans. It's my mistake. It was a wrong idea to come and see you. I shouldn't have come. I should have known better. Please, let's keep this between us. I don't want to hear it outside, please. Until everything takes its natural unveiling. It's alright. It's okay. I'm sorry too please. I didn't mean to offend you. I just felt I should be honest with you. It's alright. No one is going to hear about it. Thank you. I should be on my way. Bye. Amanda left Mr. Jones' house angry. She was very bitter and was feeling guilty to have come to see Mr. Jones or reveal her secret to him. Chai. Amanda. Amanda. Amanda, you will never learn. You are such a stupid person. How dare you go meet that hypocrite brother Jones, hey. Now my story is known by another person. It was good when it was only the wife that knew about it. Imagine him judging me. Is it a crime to love? Everybody is looking for something. Everybody is looking for love. Love can be found in strange places, in any given time or place. I found love with Pastor Franklin. He is my kind of man. And the world wants to judge me. 
Love doesn't ask why. No problem. We shall see. I shall deal with Brother Jones that he shall not live to tell the story. Let my love come back. I know he loves me. He shall come back to me. A week later, Pastor Franklin returned from his vacation and reconnected with Sister Amanda. Are you still angry with me? I missed you so much, you weren't calling, or returning my calls. That was why I went to speak with Brother Jones about it. You don't get it, do you? This is supposed to be a secret for now. I didn't go away forever, it was like how long? Hello. Just three weeks. Fine, I told you two weeks, but it didn't matter how long I stayed. If I was to be transferred to another branch or state or dead, everybody in the church would have known about it. You are just so impatient. That's just one problem I have with you. When I say, wait, you wait. When I stay lay low, you do so. Instead you went and started broadcasting our union to whoever cared to hear. Now, it's no longer a secret, and we have to deal with it. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I was only worried. I didn't know what I was doing. So what is going to happen now? It's all right. Elder Asia and Deacon Eric shall help me out. They've been a great help to me in the ministry you know. When the chief usher tried to disobey me, Elder Asia and Deacon Eric were the ones who took me to see a strong native doctor who conjured medicine for me to deal with him. The native doctor inflicted him with spiritual charm and caused his right hand from up to down to be swollen and paralyzed. He thought it was a mere sickness and was busy calling me to come and pray for me at the hospital he was. I laughed. I went to pray for him though. I thought him a lesson. He told him how much he spent treating himself. The hand had a defect after that. I bet he will learn to keep his mouth shut and honor his pastor. After all, the Bible said, Touch not my prophet and do my prophet no harm. So, you see Brother Jones? By the time I meet with my helpers in the ministry, sorry shall be his name. He can't know our secret and be alive, he shall tell it one day. I don't trust him. I can't trust such secret with another man. Good for him. Two days later. You sent for me pastor. Yes, Elder Asia, I need your help. You and Deacon Eric have to help me please. Anything you want sir. I want you to accompany me to the native doctor's place. There is someone I need to silence. Bro Jones. He knows my secret and is being judgmental already. I have to silence him forever. When we get to the place and come back, Sister Amanda is close to his family, she shall tackle him physically, Deacon Eric shall tackle him in church, while we watch how it manifests. We need to do something ASAP. No problem. Your wish is my command, Pastor. A week later. Greetings, Baba. Welcome to my palace. What brought you again? I know you come here when you need my help. Well, that's not completely true. And yes, I need your help. Someone is daring to disgrace me. My member wants to expose me. I need him silenced. Hmm. That's a minor case. Are you ready to pay for it? Any amount to cover my tracks and keep his nose off my business. My elder, Asia told me the items you require for the charm. I brought everything including a live chicken. Hum, you are ready. You are covered. Drop the items there. You need to put three cowries, put the oldest coins, put the ancient penny, and a 25 cent. QQQ walk, 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 walk. Ha 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 ha. I will prepare a charm for you. You shall put some in this food, water or drink. Anything he'll take into his stomach. Then you will place some on this seat. Ensure he sits on it for at least three consecutive days. Then, it done. Watch and see him going till he enters six feet. Ha 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 ha. Thank you. I know I can count on you. The next Thursday service. Hum, where's Brother Jones? Why is he not on seat? And his office is open. This is a nice opportunity for me to strike. I'm happy I came with my own portion of the charm to place on his seat. I'm sure Deacon Eric has done his part. Pastor Franklin placed some charms cooked for him by the native doctor on Brother Jones' seat. 
I will show him. A minute later. Ah, Pastor Franklin, you came to my office? I'm sorry I stepped out to ease myself. Ah, no problem at all. You are blessed. Bless you, bless you. Thank you, sir. Is there anything I can help you with, sir? Brother Jones, you know you are my spiritual son and brother. Please, Sister Amanda told me something. She said she came to you to confess what didn't even exist. Because he was bitter with me, so she only tried to blackmail me. Please, kindly disregard such information she related to you. It was the work of the devil. Nothing like that happened, nothing is happening between the two of us. The devil only wanted to use her to cause chaos in the church. But, thank you Jesus. Mercy said no. It's alright, Pastor. I'm happy that was never true. To God be the glory. Thank you my brother, for believing in me. Not a problem at all sir. Alright, let me get going. I have a meeting somewhere. Alright sir. Later. Pastor Franklin, Elder Azia, Deacon Eric and Sister Amanda conspired against Brother Jones. A lot of, of atrocities were taking place simultaneously in church. Brother Jones had forgotten about everything. A month later. Oh my body, what is happening to me? Ah, oh, I can't get up, why is my limbs so weak? Ah, oh, I can't feel my legs. Honey, honey, please come, I need your help. I don't know what is wrong with me. My head is seriously pounding. My limbs are weak. I feeling pains all over my body. Goodness me, it is sign of malaria? Could it be typhoid fever? Ah! Brother Jones was struck with ailment. Boil sprouts out of his body, pores came out of his body. Holes on his legs, and he couldn't stand on his own. Good evening Mr. Jones, how are you feeling now? Doctor, the cramps on my waist, it has gone down my legs. I'm no more feeling my legs. Please, I'll like to meet your wife. All right, doctor. Good evening, Mrs. Jones. We have run all diagnostic tests. We haven't really found anything medical report on your husband. We had thought it may be lupus. But it's not. I feel it's a spiritual attack. I'll like you to intercede for your husband. Both of you need prayers. There is nothing the Lord cannot do. We shall continue to try our best. But seek God's intervention too. That's what I can say now. All right, doctor. I will do that. Mrs. Jones went to meet their pastor, Pastor Franklin, for prayers for her husband. So, pastor, that's how it's been. We have spent so much money. His health seems to deteriorate by the day. The doctors haven't really found anything medical name for it. We need your prayers, sir. Please, put us in your prayers. Stop crying, Mrs. Jones. Everything shall be all right. Who can battle with the Lord? Nobody. It is well with your family. It is well with him. Don't worry, I shall remember to put him in my prayers. Thank you, Pastor. Let me get going. Two months passed. Brother Joan's health was getting worse by the day. Until Cynthia's friend invited her to meet her pastor. Thank you, Jesus. Sister, please, what's your name? I am Mrs. Cynthia Jones, sir. A friend of mine invited me to meet you. It is well with the righteous. God says if he allows this evil to prevail over your husband that you shall ask, where is God? This ailment and affliction comes from nowhere but from the church you worship. Ah! Really? Ha 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 ha, you are surprised? Oh Lord. Not all that call me Lord, Lord shall enter into my kingdom says the Lord of hosts. There is a lot of evil atrocities going on in your church. The place is polluted, and there is no power of God there anymore. The people there are blind not to see what's going on there. The glory of God had long departed. The pastors, the elders are messing up with the female church members, the choristers, and they still sing and lift up holy hands mocking the power of God. Ah, there comes a great day of vengeance of the Lord. But not for God, your husband would be dead now but for the power of God to be made manifest, his grace sustained him and he shall have his healing. His health shall be restored. 
Ah, sir, ah, why would God allow that in the house of God? In his house, why is he quiet about the atrocities of these people? Why would he allow my husband to become a victim of the pastor's evil? In the same church. Ha 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 ha, sister if what was plotted to happen had happened, you would have questioned God more than this. Because God gives a long time to see if a sinner will repent and turn away from his evil. The appointed time for judgment of the Lord has not come. For now, both evil and good, goat and sheep strifles together in the church. There is so much evil even in the church, and true Christians, believers needs God to be able to discern foul spirit and retrace their steps. I will pray for your husband and your family. And after God has healed him, you people need to leave that very church to air their spirit of God and continue serving a living God. It is well, all right pastor, I shall relate with my husband. Father, I am sorry if I have spoken against your name or question you. Please, have mercy upon me. Forgive our shortcomings. Thank you for this revelation and for giving victory. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Victory belongs to God. Victory belongs to Him. In heaven and in earth, victory belongs to God. Thank you Lord for, for your mighty power that is able to heal all diseases and infirmity, and destroy the yoke of the devil in the name of Jesus. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ, speak deliverance unto every infirmity, every attack, ailment and affliction over the life of Brother Jones, in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Every knee of disease and infirmity, attack, death sentence in his life blow, in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. You fountain of discomfort in his body at the hospital, dry up now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. O Lord arise, and stop the work of evil workers, may they not be able to perform their enterprise. Destroy the evil charms of darkness, every evil food that was fed him in the dream, every enchantment upon his life and family, let the mighty healing power of God overshadow Brother Jones now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Thank you Lord for answering. And I know you shall put the workers of iniquities to shame, in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. O Lord, every serpent and scorpion of affliction over my husband, I decree them die, in Jesus' name, Amen. O Lord, let all that has to be shaken out of his life, be shaken out, in the name of Jesus. May I not fall a victim of their evil in Jesus' name, Amen. I denounce every engagement with the spirit of sickness and death, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, speak deliverance into my life, in the name of Jesus. Every covenant of affliction and sickness, die, in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. I decree full recovery, every organ of his body from evil altar, in the name of Jesus, Amen. Blood of Jesus, flush out every evil deposit out of my husband's blood, in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. I decree and declare my husband's total liberty. I decree we shall be not a prey to wicked and evil pastors in Jesus' name, Amen. I cover myself and my husband with the blood of Jesus Christ, Amen. I cover our children with the blood of Jesus Christ, Amen. They shall not leave my husband and attack me or our child and succeed, I return every evil arrow back to the sender in Jesus Christ's name, Amen. Thank you Lord for answering. A week later, Brother Jones started responding to treatment, and in few months, he totally recovered. His health started picking up, and he recuperated well. He left the church to another church with his family. The evil pastor and his cabinet are still in his former church doing more evil. None of the members seems to mind including people who have been attacked before and are suffering defects. They don't know where the problem lies, they see the evil happening as part of life's tribulations. The days are evil and there are many atrocities in the church perpetrated by evil pastors and church elects. Beware of evil pastors, beware of evil happening in the church. Don't fall a victim of evil men. Pray often and discern where is wrong. If the foundation is destroyed, what should the righteous do? Thank you for watching. S please kindly subscribe to Emmy Narrate channel, turn on the notification to get notification when our videos are published. God bless you.